In the previous chapter, we learned about mirrors and how they form images through reflection. So now we're looking at lenses and how they form in images through refraction. So um, we're looking at spherical lenses, just like we looked at spherical mirrors. See, if you look at this lens here, this is really formed by uh, two spheres. So if you imagine this is one sphere right in here, and there's another sphere in here, and they're kind of like basically overlapping. And so it's really just two sections of two spheres, and that's how you create the lens. And you can do that over here with the diverging lens as well. So there's this sphere here, and they're just kind of in another sphere here. And so we're just looking at this lens that's formed by these two spheres. So there's two um, radii of curvature with these lenses. And uh, as you can see, there are two types of lenses called converging and diverging lenses. Uh, that just depends on what it does to the parallel rays. Remember, you have paroxial rays that are rays that are parallel to this principal axis that's going through the center of the lens. And these are close to that, lens, uh, that principal axis. And if they converge to this focal point, they're called a converging lens. If they diverge away once they pass through the lens, then it's called a diverging lens. Now you may notice over here on the right side, there are a variety of shapes of diverging and converging lenses. Uh, the key here to distinguish between the pictures of which one is converging and which one is diverging is diverging lenses are basically the thinnest in the middle. They're thick at the edges. Uh, where a converging lens, if the, in the middle, they're going to be the thickest. So they're the thickest in the middle, whereas diverging lenses are thinnest in the middle. Um, just like mirrors, converging mirrors, and so hence converging lenses have a positive focal length, and diverging lenses will have a negative focal length. The focal length is the distance from the center of the lens to the focal point. So for a converging lens, it's going to be positive here, and for a diverging lens, it's going to be negative. So a positive focal length back of the lens for converging lenses, but diverging negative focal length and it will be a focus that's in front of the lens. That's different for mirrors. Um, also, um, the name confuses people too. A convex mirror, remember convex mirror is something like this, and, and this is the back side of the mirror, and the light comes in like this and this, and the light diverges away when it hits it. That's called a convex mirror. Well, a diverging lens is not called convex. It's actually a concave lens. So that's another difference between them. So in a converging uh, mirror, that was a concave mirror, if you recall. Um, the rays come in, come in through here like this, and then they converge towards this point here called the focus. All right, and so a concave mirror was converging, but now in converging lenses, it's called a convex lens. There's a lot of names as you can see, and it just depends on what the radius is on the surfaces. This is called a plano convex because it's flat on one side and convex on the other side. You don't need to know the names really, but you do need to know how to distinguish and tell which ones are converging and which ones are diverging. I should also point out that in any lens, there are two focal points. This is called the primary focus. There is also on the opposite side, equidistant away from the center of the lens, is a secondary focus. Um, and over here, we have the primary focus in front of the lens. And again, over equidistant on the other side, we have the secondary focus. And down at the bottom section of, the, of your notes, you'll see the appropriate equations that we use for solving thin lens problems. And they're the same that we use for spherical mirrors. The, because we're dealing with spherical lenses, the focal length is still half the radius of curvature, and the thin lens equation is the same one we would use for mirrors. And the magnification equation is the same. There are some differences in the sign conventions. Okay, what is the same? Well, um, in object that is considered real is still going to be in front of the mirror or lens. It's still considered positive. And if you happen to have a virtual object, it would be an object that was placed on the back of the lens or the back of a mirror. That hasn't changed. Um, what has changed, I'll say what's the same, the image distance 
The image distance is positive. That's still going to be considered a real image, whether it's a mirror or a lens. And if you have a negative image distance, that's still a virtual image. It's just where the image actually forms. So a real image will form back behind the lens, where a virtual image will form in front of the lens. Let me try to show you what I mean by that. If we place an object in front of a converging lens, and you get an image that forms on the opposite side of the lens, on the back side of the lens, so the front side of the lens is here and the back side of the lens is over here, this image is then going to be a real image. These light rays that leave the object and refract through the lens through here and form this image are actually going to intersect where the image is. And so therefore it is considered a real image. Now let's say we put the object quite close to the lens, in between the focal point and the lens, we'll get an image that is on the same side as the object. And if you were to try to put a screen here right where the image is, you wouldn't be able to capture it on the screen like you would over here if the image formed on the back of the lens. The only way you're going to be able to see this image is if you were to look through the lens with your eye here and view this object, then that object would appear larger, it would be magnified. This would act as a magnifying glass. So this image would be virtual. And so this would be a uh, virtual image. Now the image distance here would be negative. If the image forms over here on this side, that is a positive image distance. So object and distances are the same as it was before, but images, where they're located um, with respect to the front and the back lens is the opposite. Remember for mirrors, real images will form in front of the mirror, and virtual images will form behind the mirror. It's the opposite case with lenses. Are there any other differences or similarities? Well, if you have a positive focal length or radius of curvature, it's still called converging. If it's a negative focal length or radius of curvature, it's still called diverging. And it's a converging mirror or lens, I guess. But since we're talking about lenses, this should be really changed to lenses. What is different? In a converging lens, the focal point, that primary focal point, will form behind the lens. And it'll be called a convex lens. Uh, whereas a mirror, a converging mirror, will be a concave mirror, and the focal point will lie in front of the mirror. And if you're dealing with a concave lens, right, then that will have a, con a con focus that's in front of the lens. Take a look up above here. This is your concave lens. The focal point was in front of the lens. And for a converging lens or a convex lens, the focal point was behind the lens, the back of the lens. That's different for mirrors. And the rest is pretty much the same. If M is positive, then you've got an upright image. If M is negative, then it's inverted. That's the same as it was in mirrors. M is smaller if it's less than 1 and larger if it's greater than 1. And if it's equal to 1, it's the same size. That hasn't changed. So just really where the, the location of the image forms and then also the type of lens. When you deal with convex lenses, uh, they're converging, and the focal point, that primary focal point, is found in behind the lens, and that's the opposite for mirrors. OK, that's it for our introduction of converging and diverging lenses. You can move on to ray diagrams and then start your problem solving.